Welcome to Medlacto. Today we are going to discuss a very important category of the anti-cancer drug and that is gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs. So basically it is somewhat difficult but hope so I'll try my best to deliver in a more simplified way. So basically in this lecture we will discuss the three most important analog luprolide, gosidralin and the tripsrolalin. So basically we are going to discuss luprolide lupro light gosirelin gosirelin and the triptorelin triptorelin we will discuss these three analogs luprolide and the gosirelin is actually taken by the subcutaneous root actually through the skin and the triptorelin is basically taken by the intramuscular root we will discuss the importance of by taking the luprolide and the gosirelin by subcutaneous route and the triprolin by the intramuscular route. Okay. Before we start, again we will revise the type of the tumor that is hormone mediated. There are some tumors when they get the hormonal stimulus. When they get the hormonal stimulus, then in the presence of the hormone stimulus, these tumor start regressing. They will get regress in the presence of the hormonal stimulus. Okay. On the other hand, there are some tumors when they get the hormonal stimulus, then in the presence of the hormonal stimulus, these tumor start progressing. They will progress, increase. So, that's the most important thing. If we stop the hormonal stimulus, then these tumors can be curable. In this category, gonadotropin releasing hormone analog, we are going to discuss tumors that are basically the hormone dependent. That's the most important thing. So, starting the mechanism of the gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs. So, most important component is the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is basically the part of the brain, most important part of our brain. That is the hypothalamus. Okay. From the hypothalamus, you will see the release of the gonadotropin releasing hormone. Okay, that's the most important thing. From the hypothalamus, you will see the release of the gonadotropin releasing hormone. That's the most important thing. From the hypothalamus. Okay, these gonadotropin releasing hormone will go to the anterior pituitary gland okay that's the most important thing anterior anterior pituitary gland so actually basically the pituitary gland has three basic parts anterior posterior and the medial so gonadotropin releasing hormone will go toward the anterior pituitary gland so if you see here here is basically the if you see anterior pituitary gland so anterior pituitary gland has receptor for the gonadotropin releasing hormone so if you see here there are lot of receptors for the gonadotropin releasing hormone okay these hormone will bind to these receptor okay after binding they will stimulate the anterior pituitary gland and ultimately you will see the release of the gonadotropic hormones gonadotropic hormones okay that is here are basically the different gonadotropic hormone so in the gonadotropic hormone you will see the two most important hormone that is the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone these are basically the two most important gonadotropic hormone okay these hormone present both in male and the female okay if you see here first of all if we discuss the luteinizing hormone that is luteinizing hormone actually present in both male and the female Similarly, follicle stimulating hormone, follicle stimulating hormone present both in male and
can be female okay that's most that's the most important thing so actually in the male luteinizing hormone act on the lytic cells of the testes okay that's the most important thing what type of cell lytic cell of testes luteinizing hormone act on the lytic cell basically here is if i say this is the testes okay so actually lytic cell present in the interstitial space of the testes so when the luteinizing hormone act on the lytic cell or you can say interstitial cell ultimately you will see the release of the testosterone testosterone that is the hormone sex hormone okay in the female luteinizing hormone actually do the ovulation release of the act from the ovary that is the luteinizing hormone act in the female follicle stimulating hormone in the male basically you will see in the male it act on the sertoli cell sertoli cells okay that are actually present in the seminiferous tubules okay sertoli cell basically nourish the sperm so it means that this will help in the productions of the sperm okay in the female follicle stimulating hormone actually grow the follicles grow the follicles if i write with the black so follicles that are actually present in the ovary in which you will see the presence of the egg and the other major function is the release of the estrogen okay the, these are basically the important functions of the luteinizing hormone in the male female follicle stimulating hormone in the male and the female our main focus will be on the testosterone in the male and the estrogen in the female because these hormone actually trigger act on the tumors testosterone will act on the prostate gland that is actually the most important prostate cancer in the male basically in the male you will see the most important cancer is the prostate cancer in case of male and in the female you will see the breast cancer breast cancer so here are basically the two most important cancer in the male and female so testosterone will act on the prostate cancer estrogen will act on the breast cancer now we have to stop the productions of the testosterone in male and the estrogen in the female after stopping the productions of the hormone we will be able to cure the prostate cancer in male and the breast cancer in the female okay so you will see if someone take the gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs okay they will similar to the gonadotropin releasing hormone okay if you see here they are just analog like luprolide lupro lide gossi relin and the tripto relin any one of them okay these hormone similar to the gonadotropin releasing hormone bind to the receptor of the gonadotropin releasing hormone okay that's the most important thing that's a similar process ultimately you will see the formations of the gonadotropic hormones uh, that is uh, luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone but the question is now we have to stop the productions of the hormone luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone but these drugs actually also promote the productions of the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone that is not working okay now if you see here in the normal process when you see the productions of the gonadotropic hormone by the gonadotropin releasing hormone ultimately when the body do, doesn't require any luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone through negative feedback mechanism it will stop the process productions of the these hormones goes toward the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland and says that there is no more required of the uh, luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone that's the most important thing. 
but these drugs actually given through the subcutaneous route and the muscular route it means that small amount continuously continuously go toward the anterior pituitary gland and bind to the receptor and productions of the luteinizing hormone and the most important process when some drugs continuously bind to the receptor then in that situation you will see the most important process that is desensitization okay you are going to see desensitization of the receptors that's the most important process or you can say tachyphylaxis in that situation the receptor will no more response to the these drugs luprolide gosiralin and the triptoralin okay ultimately these receptor will become desensitized or it can go toward inside the cell and there is no receptor that is actually present outside so ultimately you will see there is reduce reduction in the hormone luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone and ultimately testosterone in the male and the estrogen in the female that's the most important process desensitization of the receptor by continuous stimulus given by these drugs so ultimately in the starting of the treatment you will see the release of the high hormone testosterone and the estrogen but with the passage of the time the hormone level decrease that's the most important process that actually happens behind the gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs okay if we discuss the adverse effects so adverse effects most important is the hot flashes hot flashes this is the most important adverse effects of the analogs okay you can say gynecomastia okay gynecomastia in case of male enlargement of the breast in case of male okay and you can say impotence impotence erection problem in the male or you can say or orgasm will be reduced in case of male that is the most important process because you are going to disturb the hormone that is testosterone if the testosterone level decrease then you see the problem impotence erection problem in case of male and is the tumor flare tumor flare in the tumor flare when we start the chemotherapy then in that situation you will see the adverse effect with the passage of the time by taking the treatment that is the tumor flare reactions okay and you can also see the asthenia asthenia physical weakness lot of physical weakness by taking the these drugs so this is all about the gonadotropin releasing hormone analogs if you still have any question you may ask in the comment section thank you so much